Proverbs 23, verse 7, is really the foundation of this book, Training Your Thinking. And it simply says these words. As a man thinks, so is he. I really want to emphasize the word thinks, or the King James would say, thinketh. Not as a man thought, but as a man continues to think. As a man thinks. So there is this continuation of thought that must transpire within an individual's life for you to become everything God has created you to be. Now somebody ought to thank God. You might not be who you want to be, but you certainly are not who you used to be. Right? And the better you think, the more you are going to become the person God designed you to be. So as a man thinketh, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. I'm going to just do a little class tonight and just see if you've been listening. There are two superpowers in the mind. Can someone tell me what they are? Your memory and your imagination. Let's say it together. Your memory and your imagination. Memories are powerful, right? Because they contain what? Pictures of your past, both pleasurable and painful. Remember delete and drag? Or click and drag? So be careful what you click and drag from your memory and place in your imagination. Learn the power of deleting. Learn the power of erasing. You may not forget the feeling. Hear what I'm saying? But you do not have to carry the pain. All right? It's alive when we relive it. We keep it breathing. When you keep it in your mind, revolving painful experiences in your life, it will paralyze you in your purpose. Let the past be the past. Paul the apostle said, I've learned something very important. I forget those things that are behind. And what do I do? Press toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. So memories contain pictures of your past. Imagination contains frames for your future. Remember what we said. Never allow pictures from your past to determine what is in the frame of your future. Never allow pictures from your past to determine what is the, in the frame of your future. I have always believed that a person will become what he imagines himself to be. I've always believed that. We will become what we imagine ourselves to be. God is so innovative, it's amazing to me. He's a God of ingenuity. He's not only a creator, he is creative. Now think about that. He's so diverse in his ability to create, he created no two of us alike. Right? Everyone has their own fingerprints. Ask your neighbor, how does it feel to sit by an original? Right. There's no one else like you in the whole world. That's a strong thought, isn't it? I'm going to give you some definitions tonight because we're going to work through this. The first word is imagined. E-D, imagined. It means to have a thought or to fix your thinking toward a purpose. To fix or fixate your thinking toward a purpose. Or you could say to fixate you're thinking toward your future. Imagined. Now, why would I give you that word? Because Genesis eleven six says that God came down to see what they were building. Right? And when he did, he said they are one. That is an endorsement. That is, you know, that is God commending them. They have one language. They are one people. 
because of their ability to unify, now God's going to say nothing will be restrained from them. As a matter of fact, he's going to go on to say, I'm so impressed with what they're doing that whatever they imagine, they will be able to accomplish. That's pretty strong, isn't it? Whatever they imagine, they will be, nothing will be impossible because of their ability to imagine. I just think it's the caveat of unity. It's kind of the continuation of the postscript of unity that when you can get people thinking alike, I think that's why teams win championships. Because all of a sudden you have a group of people that start with this imagination. We may could do this. Then they win a few games. And they pick up what is called momentum, which is the capturing of a moment. What is the root word for momentum? Moment. They capture a moment. And they capitalize on a victory or a moment. And then they create progression. They build off of what it doesn't take God, but one moment. Why does God give us miracles to give us moments to create movement in what matters? So he will bless you in order to get you going. He'll give you a miracle or a moment to create velocity to your vision. I believe God will bless us when we're in stuck areas. Just to get us out of neutral and put us in the drive again. Now, I'm going to need, even though we're teaching, I might need you to say amen or right on. Or talk in the building, bishop. So the first word is imagine. To have a thought or to fix. That's what we're doing, right? Training our thinking. Second word. Yeah, and some of us do need repair work. To fix it is to repair it. Second word is imagination. The first definition you're going to find in the proper etymology of the word imagination is a frame. Okay, so Hebrews tells us that the worlds were framed by the word of God, insinuating the idea that they were framed in his mind before they ever came out of his mouth. Whew. Be careful that you don't say everything you think. Because if your imagination is a frame and you start speaking what you're seeing, you might have to deal with a reality that you really don't want to handle. That's how strong framing is. I really believe this, that God gave us an imagination to create pictures because the word imagination means a thing framed in your mind. Very powerful, isn't it? God gave us an imagination to what? Create pictures. Your mind has an imagination and a memory, two superpowers. Your memory replays your past. Your imagination preplays your future. I really believe what we need is a sanctified imagination. If the imagination has the ability to preplay your prophetic future, what in the world could you imagine if you just gave your mind and your thinking to God? It's so strong, and I said this this morning in devotion, I want to reiterate it, that God only stopped the building of Babel, the tower that the people were building in Genesis chapter 11, for one sentence, they built it saying, let us make us a name. When you are building something for yourself to make yourself a name, God will always, now watch what he did, Josh. This is powerful. I like you sitting right there too because you're such an interesting listener. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. I like people on the front row that act like they're interested. But the Bible says that he came down and what did he do? Confuse their thinking or confound their language? Yeah. He had to stop what they were saying because what they were saying was what they was thinking. 
as long as they could understand each other in communication, anything they thought they was going to see. My question in the whole Tower of Babel is why did God have a problem with it? Well, we know already because they said, let us make us a name. Let us make ourselves a name. But here's what I came to today, Sherry. I came to this conclusion. That when you can't go forward, you want to go up. I'm going to take it a bit further. Kelvin, this is going to get deep. and you, This is just an opinion, all right? This ain't the preacher pre saying the Lord told me. In the area, region of Shinar, it was filled with this thing called slime and mortar, which basically mortar is slime and water mixed together to make bricks, right? I believe they were prophetically seeing Egypt. <laughs> and watch this. They began to be their own taskmaster. They didn't need Pharaoh to drive them. And because they were so bent on building a name for themselves, they had an Egypt in their future where they're going to have to build for somebody else. Boy, y'all missed that right there. When you labor for your own benefit and you're building something that's not going to give God glory, you might enjoy the benefits for a while, but ultimately there's a taskmaster coming to tax you. Anyway, I just, I just thought that might be interesting. That's just food for thought to make you imagine something. So then your imagination and your memory both can help you or they can hurt you. We just learned that, didn't we? So imagination, here's another definition. The faculty of imagining or of forming images. Circle this word concepts write that down concepts that's a powerful powerful word and i'm gonna deal with that a little bit tonight last word definition imaging doctors have discovered that imaging is a technique in which one uses mental images to control bodily processes you can ease pain in your physical body by imaging pleasure Now, some of you say, Bishop, this sounds interesting to me. You mean I can image my way and ease, imaging in my mind, pleasure can bring ease to my physical body. Absolutely. It absolutely can. It is very akin to the art of meditation, which no, here's the problem with church today. We never talk to you about the soul. Because the soul mediates between the body and the spirit. That's too complicated for people to, it's too complex of a subject for people to deal with. But let me help you. You are body, soul, and spirit. We teach you your body's evil, your spirit is holy, and we don't even deal with the soul. But what you don't know is your soul is continually trying to reconcile your body and your spirit. In the same way we would, that we don't deal with soul, we don't deal with mind. We just want to be spiritual and run around the building with goosebumps. We, how dare we tell you to think? Right? How dare we go there? So meditation is another word. We don't tell people. When you say meditation, people all of a sudden go to transcendental meditation. You know, like I can just be transposed to another place by closing my eyes. Now I'm in Hawaii. The wells are spewing water out of there, whatever it is. <laughs> what we failed to tell you, and we're going to talk about this, and it's in the book. The art of meditation is powerful. The Bible tells you in the first Psalm, meditate on the word, the law of the Lord. Meditation is a very powerful thing. Well, if meditation is powerful and imaging is an offshoot of meditation, then why don't we meditate? You know why? Because we want to tell God what we want all the time. And meditation requires you to be quiet. We don't talk to Christians about this stuff. 
because it's not exciting to them. It's not God's going to give you a Cadillac if you bring $100 and put it in the offering plate. Or God's going to give you a new house if you bring $1,000 tonight. I'm amazed at the stupidity of Christianity. I'm sorry if I offended you. I really am. I'm amazed at the crowds of people that have a gravitational pull to caricatures in pulpits and not characters. Goofy and Mickey Mouse. Everything's fantasy land. The more fake the preacher looks and the more fake he is, the more people come. And it just sickens me. It nauseates me. I'm just, I'm sorry, y'all. It's Tuesday night and I'm vulnerable. I'm a little vulnerable right now. It just, I'm real tired of it. I'm real, t okay. All Christian TV is not bad. Amen. What is the root word of imagination, imaging? What is the root word? Image. Now, let me ask you, what did God do when he created us? He created us in what? His image and his likeness. His form and his fashion. Where is God in your mind? As a man thinks, so is he. How do you think about God? Let me help you. What, what I just told you is how you think about God is ultimately how you will see yourself. If you cannot put proper esteem, estimation, evaluation on God, you will never learn to appreciate yourself. So you know what you will do as a result of that? You will depreciate yourself. It's what you means to discount your destiny and you'll come to a place that you think you deserve every agony you ever suffered. So it started with your image of God, not your image of yourself. That's why religion has jacked us up because for centuries we taught a God that had a long gray beard sitting on a throne with a lightning bolt in his hand and he can't wait to send you to hell. He's mad. But my Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Everything God created was good. So the challenge we have as preachers is changing your mind from an austere father and producer to a compassionate, loving God that understands your weaknesses. He's not mad because you fall. Bishop, prove it. Micah chapter 7. God delights to show mercy. I'm going to show you another image of your father. Your father loves it when you fall because it gives him an opportunity to help you up. He delights to show mercy. But we have bent people's mind on you're saved one day, but because you said a bad word last night, if you die today, you're going to hell. It's not true. It's rigid and it's not the father. That's why he's called an everlasting father. Okay. Image, likeness, presentation. Okay, so let's end this recital. Shall we? Where did we end Sunday? Little shepherd boy, what's he got? Five stones and a sling and what else? And an imagination. Where did his imagination to kill Goliath come from? A memory of killing a lion. Thank you, Nina. A memory of killing a lion and a bear. Don't let me get no victories. Because if I get some victories under my belt, y'all ain't hear me talk to you. Those are memories of pleasure. I'm trying to train your mind to triumph. So if you get some victories under your belt, it's easy to look at a challenge and say, thank you for showing up. Thank you, Goliath, for acting like you acted. Because now you're giving me an opportunity to put another notch in this belt. And before long, you start believing that with God, all things are possible. That's where God's promoting you to, to a level of believing that with him, 
nothing shall be impossible. Somebody ought to clap their hands right there and give God praise. Nudge your neighbor and ask him, how's your mind tonight? <laughs> I like it. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. That's why it's so important. Now, you will always move in the, in the direction of your strongest and most dominant thought. Write that down. You will always be moving in the direction of your strongest and most dominant thought. Always. Oh, man, don't make me go here. This is not in my notes, but I feel inspired. Inspiration is the brother of imagination, by the way. You might want to write that down. Inspiration and imagination are brothers. <laughs> you can have imagination, but if you're not inspired to accomplish what you see, you'll never endeavor to do it. Inspiration means inspirited. So if you see somebody get victory, what does it do to you? It inspires you. So inspiration breathes on imagination. And your mind is enlightened. Have you ever felt like that? Well, you, something just happened and it's like somebody turned the light on. And you're like, wow, now I see it. The result of imagination and inspiration, shaking hands, is a revelation that will have a manifestation. The result of inspiration and imagination, shaking hands, is a revelation of what will ultimately be a manifestation. I ain't saying it again. <laughs> if you ain't got it by now, give up and learn shorthand. Say these words, perspective, perspective. perception, perception. Paradigm. paradigm. Okay, I'm going to move these quick. Perspective is how you see a thing. Perception is what you see as a result of the understanding of the thing you're looking at. <laughs> perception. Paradigm is the framework that you are looking through. It's why you see a thing the way you do. Man, I wish I had time to work on that. What you're thinking, how you're thinking, and why you think like you think. I just wanted to bring this one back out because I never spent a lot of time on perception. But today, I just started digging. Do you ever dig? I'm not talking about in your nose. <laughs> you pass your nose into your brain. Listen to me clearly. I'm just being facetious because I'm trying to make you giggle a little bit to lighten up. the. It got kind of heavy there for a moment. I used to, technology is a friend and an enemy. Okay, so now, you know, they're calling this generation guinea pigs of the device you're holding in your hand. Because we don't know, we, and they're saying we will not know for the next 20 years what the outcome of that device is going to do to people. It could be great, but it could be some dire circumstances and consequences because we don't know. We do know it's affecting children's brains at a level that they become so addicted to it, it's like someone being addicted to cocaine. Women finding eight-year-old boys in their bedroom with the light just shining on a computer and just froze. Nothing's going on on the screen. They're just froze on a smart device. Hmm. You ever heard of brain hacking? That's what Google and those guys study all the time, your brain. You know what there's a battle for right now in this time? Your brain. So if the Internet can catch you in the web... And hold you captive to a smart device. Here's the first thing you've lost is this. How you doing? My name is Rick. Josh, nice to meet you. Teenagers sit in rooms and text each other and don't talk. You know why? Because this requires me to think. How am I going to approach you? 
What am I going to say to you? How is the communication going to be? It's called social skills. You remember when we used to move in the neighborhoods, April, and the, when you got a new neighbor, you cooked them some cookies and brought them over there? Baked them, you baked cookies, right? Baked them some cookies and bring them over there. And we're so glad you're in the neighborhood. Not now. You never even meet them anymore. Some of you guys live in apartments and you don't know the door next door to you. <laughs> because we are so consumed in that smart device. Okay. So what is happening to thinking? It's shrinking. Thinking is shrinking. What is thinking for us? What you're holding? What I was saying was a while ago, I like digging, Joanna. You remember? That's what brought me to this subject. Am I boring y'all? I used to love it when there was no computers. I'm that old. I'm that guy that had eight tracks that were like this big. I know I see some brothers in here that remember those things. You know, and, was, and you had that big old, but you had like a cardboard box full in your car, right? And you pull it out. It's got to be three clicks, like kick, kick, kick. Yeah. Oh, you didn't have the luxury of forward winding or rewinding. Whatever was playing, you had to deal with it. I'll tell you how far I'll go back. We put aluminum foil on our antennas. Them rabbit ears, and you had to move it around. And your daddy said, oh, to the right, to the right, to the right. Now hold it, hold it, hold it right there. Take your hand off. Take your hand off. <laughs> Y'all remember them days? That's how far I go back. <laughs> so before all this computer stuff, I had to get all my books out to study. I actually had to pull a Bible out. Imagine that with a leather cover. Can you imagine that? And then commentaries, like 10 commentaries. And then encyclopedias and dictionaries. Dustin remembers those days. He'd come in my office, there'd be 20 books scattered everywhere. And I'm like, just digging in it because I love to have to search. Now it's almost too easy. I don't really have to think. I really believe this has to do with preachers preaching with no power. Because you don't have to study. My Bible tells me, Paul told Timothy, study. To show, don't copy a message off of Google. Don't cut and paste your message and bring it on Sunday morning and say, the Lord told me you are a lie. God did not tell you, Google told you. <laughs> So we don't have to think no more. All we have to do is rehearse what we read. It requires no thinking, no digging, no studying. My opinion. So today I was digging. Remember what I told you, Shinar men? I'm just checking you again. On Sunday, the, the valley there, remember that, Shinar? Intense emotional experience. Talking to Josh today. Josh, we need to deal with that pain a little bit. New York Times posted this article. Listen to the title of it, Pastor D. Intensity of emotion is tied to perception and thinking. Imagine that. Let me read it again. Intensity of emotion is tied to perception and thinking. And they do this whole psychological research on what happens to people who have gone through severe emotional experiences. Be careful who you give your mind and your soul to. Are you hearing what I... And let me tell you, stop blaming somebody else. They took me there. No, they didn't take you there. You are a grown adult. I took you there. You went there because you wanted to go there. But they hurt me emotionally because you were crazy enough to go with them. 
So here's what happens. When you suffer from an intense emotional experience, now your perception begins to change and your senses become desensitized. You either overthink or underthink, but you never think well. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you? So you either think real quick, which results in an intense reaction because it touches one of your senses that's been dealt with before and you don't like the way it feels because you were not mature enough to grow yourself up to say you can't even jack with my emotions. You not man or woman enough to hurt me. Boy, that deep stuff, man. Okay. I love the Lord. Okay. Essentials to a powerful imagination, Josh. Let's do that. Let's skip that other part. I don't have time. Um, inception, write it down. Essentials to powerful Imagine If you give me seven more minutes, I'll be out. Inception. Here's the definition. An event that is a beginning is the first part or stage of other events or subsequent events. It means to take in hand. It's very akin to the word origin. Do y'all remember the movie Inception? Now, I didn't watch the movie. I watched 10 minutes of it, and it was so deep. I was like, I am not this smart. <laughs> no, ain't, you ain't wearing my brain out. <laughs> Trying to figure out who Chula was and Cuba and all them. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> but I learned this. I was reading the lines from the movie. Somebody know who Yusuf was in the movie? Yes. See, y'all, you do? Of course you do. You're the brain in the building. Dr. B probably does too. The rest of y'all don't even know Yusuf. You ain't watched no Inception. <laughs> Talking about, yeah, I saw it. You, ain't, you just like me. You fell asleep eating your popcorn. <laughs> but here's what he said. Dreams within dreams is too unstable. Right. Now there's this other dude named Cobb. Anybody know who Cobb is in the movie? You didn't watch the movie. 80% of y'all say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't it. You know who he is? Okay, I thought you would. Here's his response. Never create, never recreate, I should say, never recreate from your memory. Always imagine new places. Then he went on to say, what's the most resilient parasite? An idea. A single idea from the human mind can build cities. An idea can transform the world and rewrite all the rules, which is why, listen to the enemy, I have to steal it. You know what the devil wants from you? Your idea. He wants your imagination. That's why preachers don't preach to you about it because they've been deceived out of telling you your imagination is powerful, man. I came by to tell you, you can be anything you can imagine yourself to be, and Cobb can't do nothing about it. I dare you to look at somebody and tell them, Cobb ain't getting my idea. <laughs> he goes on to say, dreams feel real while we're in them. It's only when we wake up that we realize something was actually strange. I'm going to preach a message one day called Wake Up and Dream. So there's this other guy named Eames. Here's his response to all of that. You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger. Darling. Y'all wanted me to say that then. There you go, sweetheart. And he went on to say, if we're going to perform inception then we need imagination. In other words, without imagination, there's no beginning, Jose. There's no start. There's no origin. Don't miss what I'm telling you. Without imagination, there's no bearisheth. You want to go Hebrew? God created the earth out of his imagination. That's why he was impressed 
to come down to see the people in Genesis 11 building the tower of Babel. Watch what he said. Let us go down and see the city. He never said I'm mad because they building. He said let's just go make sure they doing it like we supposed to tell, like we told them to do it. Make sure they're building like I build. That what they are birthing in their imagination has a foundation that's from me. You know what the graveyard is full of? There you go. The graveyard is full of great ideas that never made it to the imagination. Because an idea is a thought. Then the, the thought materializes into imagination. If the enemy can stop the seed, he can certainly kill the plant. Why? Because he doesn't want it to produce fruit. Everything in life starts with an idea. Inception. Second word, conception. Got two minutes. Conception. It's pregnancy. To conceive is to be pregnant. It's the beginning. Let me hurry. Let me hurry. Oh, man. Remember I told you at the beginning of the lesson? There's a very important word, concept which is one of the definition of thinking or thought, concept, imagination, concept. Um, let me ask you a question. Who's pregnant first, Sarah or Abraham? Y'all see, y'all know the answer. But it's true. Now he's got to try to convince her that I'm pregnant and I know who the daddy is. Right? But Sarah can't see it because she's past the age. Boy, let me help all y'all in this building. You are not too young and you are never too old to dream. I came by to tell you, stretch that imagination back out. Unroll that screen and start dreaming big again. Because if you can conceive it, you can give it birth. Get pregnant with purpose. Carry that thing like seed man. Carry it. And don't get frustrate, frustrated in the gestation gap of carrying purpose. Gestation is the period of carrying. Too many people get pregnant with ideas and purpose. And because it's taken so long for the maturation of the gestation period. That they abort what God has given them as an assignment. You put it in the wrong hands. Everybody ain't supposed to, be, supposed to be touching what you're pregnant with. Inception, conception. Concepts come from designers. You ever seen a concept car? A concept car can be drawn and we might never see it. But it's a what? Idea. God is the master designer. But let me tell you what he's looking for. He's looking for concepticals. People who can conceive his idea. If you cannot receive or conceive his imagination for your life and materialize it in your mind, then welcome to driving a Volkswagen. Well, you're saying, Bishop, you can drive what you want to drive. I ain't talking about a literal car, I'm talking about your destiny. I'm talking about you can ride a smooth ride and be in comfort or you can create chaos in your own car. Simply because you do not have the ability to conceive not your idea for your life. Your idea is going to keep you riding rough. But if you can ever conceive, okay, so what, watch what he does. He only, boy, I'm way deep tonight. I'm sorry, y'all. I hit y'all with a one, two tonight. So what does God do? He calls men that are concepticals. It's like a receptacle, but a receptacle can only reproduce power. A conceptacle can reproduce whatever's put in it. Yeah. Ooh, come on in here, Bishop. <laughs> so what does he do? He have to find concepticals. Here one, Moses. 
Oh, I know you can't talk, brother. He stutters. He even tells God, why are you, why are you planting this in me? Why are you giving me an imagination that I can pull these people out of Egypt? Why? I can't even talk. God said, I didn't ask you to talk. I asked you to carry. I'll add a mouth to you named Aaron. You just need to carry what I want to impregnate you with. God will give you everything you need if you'll just be willing to conceive the imagination. Oh, I wish you could. Do you have the ability to just throw your arms up, your heart wide open, say, God, impregnate me with your ideas. Now, here's, here's how you know if you got it. Here's how you know if you got it. Man, I'm go over time three minutes. Here's how you know if you got it, John. Hurry, Pastor Rick. Here's how you know if you got it. If you can draw out the design that God gave you. If you can't write the vision and make it plain, you don't have it. Well, I think it needs to be like, well, no, I think it needs to. Just stop, baby. You ain't got it. Just rest until you get pregnant. Because God is a designer and he trusts his pattern to somebody who does not, be in, does not mind being pregnant with his purpose. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So, okay, there you go, Moses. Good job, Moses. Okay, now I need somebody I can trust with a flood. No, come here. Oh, I know you like to drink, but it's okay. Come here. I know you like that wine, boy. Come here. Here come Noah. I want you to build an ark, a boat. It ain't rained forever, God. I don't care. Start building. Okay? How do I build it? 300 foot long, 30 feet high, 60 feet wide. And Noah's going, what? It's not even raining. I didn't ask you about the weather. I know you can carry the design. You can carry the perfect pattern. Listen, man, the boat's going to land and you're going to get in the garden and drink yourself naked. I ain't worried about that right now. Oh, y'all hear what I'm talking? I just want to be able to trust you with my big idea. Y'all ain't hear me. Some of y'all got some jacked up stuff going on in your life. God ain't worried about what's jacked up. He just want to know if you can carry it. We'll get you fixed later. Ask your neighbor, can you carry the imagination of God? Can you carry his ideas? Can you conceive? Because you can't birth nothing you can't carry. I did about half the teaching. I'll stop. Listen, guys. It's time for the church to come to a higher level of understanding. Not just who God is. Who you are. Listen to me. Respect yourself. Appreciate yourself. Give yourself some check marks. What do you mean, Bishop? You came to church. Check. You did the devotion with me this morning. Check. You prayed at lunch. Check. You told somebody about the Lord. You started writing again. There are books in there. There's nothing... There's nothing. Listen to me, son. I speak to you as my son. Write the dang book. Yeah. Now, I tell you that. Dang ain't a bad word. Don't look at me. I ain't say damn. I said dang. <laughs> Write the book. See, there's nothing more frustrating. Some of y'all are going to deal with that damn all night. That's good. 
Spend, spend few hours wondering if Bishop's gonna make it to heaven. That's real good for your thinking. <laughs> Judgmental people waste so much time, I'm just boggling my mind. It's just like, you are worried about me that bad. Check yourself, man. Hmm. All right. Now watch this. There are many books in here. Now, Bishop, why would I write a book nobody's ever going to read? How you know? You know why I write books, David? For myself. I write what I like, and I write what I feel like God wants me to say. Now, if anybody else likes it, that's on them. But the book is written for me. Because it's a script. There are books. There are movies in here. God has a big idea. Oh, I'll stop. There are concepts in this building that if they ever come to pass, quit thinking so low of yourself. God wants you signing the check. That's about 30%. I love signing the checks. Not getting the check, signing the check. Ask your neighbor, why not you? Why does it have to be your first cousin on your mama's side? Why not you? Why can't God use you? Why can't he bless you? Why can't you change a generation? And quit looking at me funny because I said that word a while ago. Let me help you. With David is an adulterer. Abraham is a liar. Jacob is a deceiver. You want me to keep going? Noah is a drunkard. Quit discounting your destiny by things you've done in your life. People will run you into hell if you let them. Back up and tell them to get your hands off God's property. I belong to God. If I'm anything, I'm real. Come on, shout it. I can carry this dream. I can imagine big things for my life. I can conceive it. I can birth it. Lift your hands, please. Father, I pray that tonight you will open the imaginations of these, your people. To carry your ideas. To carry your concepts to carry your precepts Lord God I pray for inception the beginning of something that is a good idea I pray for conception that people will conceive your concepts of cause in this earth Lord now help us to stop being so selfish help us Lord to stop building stuff to build our own name but everything we do in this earth let it bring you glory and I thank you for it. I thank you for it. Now place one hand in the air. Place the other hand on your head. And start praying right now. Lord, open my mind. Open my mind. Every bad memory, Lord, deal with it right now. Help me, Lord, to fixate my focus on my imagination for my future. Help me to see everything you want me to be. I break every addiction, every stronghold, every restriction, every restraint. Now, snap it off in the name of Jesus. Let the anointing break the yoke tonight in the name of Jesus, Lord. As a man thinketh, so is he. As a man thinketh, so is he. As a man thinketh, so is he. Say this with me. I am great. I am powerful. I am anointed. I am conspicuous. I am unique. In the name of Jesus, I will be everything God said I will be. It's not over for me. I conceive the idea and I will birth the dream in Jesus' name. High five three people and tell them it's on right now. It's on right now. Amen.